The 40th season of MTV's The Challenge has officially commenced filming, which means our good spoiler friends have provided the official cast list of all 40, yes, 40 players plus alternates who will be gracing our screens later this year for this monumental season, and it is stacked. That is for sure. But how stacked exactly? Who did they get right? Who did they get wrong? Who did they have no business calling? And who got completely unexpectedly cold shouldered from production? That's what we are here to discuss today. This is your official instant cast reactions for the challenge season 40. What up, my fellow challenge lovers? Welcome to The Challenge Historian, where we dive deep into all things MTV's The Challenge, past, present, or future if it's happening in The Challenge Universe. We are here to document it. I am your host and dedicated challenge historian, Jacob Haldabaugh. Thank you so very, very much for being here with me on our typical Wednesday without any challenge season to cover, but a challenge season to talk about. We're looking out to the future today. Last weekend, we got word Everyone set set sail is the wrong word, took flight over to Vietnam as it seems to be, or is, I guess, is the answer, to film season 40. Season 40 has commenced. It is filming, I, I guess, as we speak, unless they're doing quarantine type stuff, what have you. I'm not sure, but everyone went. Everyone was, you know, made official, essentially. 39 of the 40, at least. There's one oddball question mark still left out there that we don't have an answer to but are you know sometimes wonderful sometimes annoying to me spoiler friends out there that provide all this great information have to listen on the cast and we know who's going to be on the season again 39 of the 40 we know whose alternates could show up on the season we know at least have an idea maybe of the format that we're going with and so we're here to discuss that today instant reactions to that cast list that has come out and to who is there filming this will only go into that so if you are someone who watches all the spoilers who maybe maybe they have started filming maybe they're a couple days into this and someone has been eliminated purged what have you i don't know any of that if it has happened i don't want to know any of that i hope you don't want to know any of that i don't like spoiling the seasons but this part is the part that is fun i want to know the cast the day they leave that's what we got here that's what we are reacting to so that is all we're discussing if any spoilers exist anything has actually happened on the season we will not be covering it and I'll just give, while we're talking spoilers, All-Stars 4, like half of the cast from All-Stars 4 is on this season. I have no idea what happens on All-Stars 4. It was filmed a very long time ago. It's finally about to come out, but I've got no idea. There will be no spoilers from there. There will be references made to, if this maybe happened on All-Stars 4, this person could be perceived different in the Challenge 40 house. Minor references like that, but all based purely on basically the cast in the trailer of all stars four, which is all I know. And I'm guessing what all a lot of, you know, so that's what we're here to discuss today. Speaking of all stars for the last time we spoke about challenge related, I thought they had just released the trailer and it was still February and my brain was confused. And I thought for a moment and during that moment, I happened to record a podcast that all stars four came out on March 10th, not April 10th. And I was like, Oh my God, I got to get a preview up. We're only days away. Obviously that was untrue. So we're not dead. We didn't do that preview yet. That preview for all stars four will be out on April 1st. That's a Monday, a week and a half before the Wednesday, April 10th debut of all stars four. So look for that pod on April 1st. I've got survivor coverage with my good friend, Tony coming this weekend, episode three, after I'm done recording and editing this, probably watching that episode three, we'll be recording over the next day or two. That'll be out this weekend, season 46 covered all the way through almost every week. We're hoping to hit the one time we won't will be next week when there will be no podcast challenge survivor or Otherwise, there's a small chance that I get something recorded this weekend to post next week, but it is unlikely. So I'm just going to go with no podcast next week. I'm traveling. It's my one week off season, if you will, before we get back into it with continued survivor coverage, all stars for coverage 
and some old school challenge coverage because that is coming back hopefully very, very soon on this podcast feed as well. So that's what we got to look forward to in the future of this pod, but in this immediate now future of this pod, this exact podcast recording, here is the agenda. We're going to go through the cast one by one, era by era, because yes, it is broken up into four eras. It might be broken up champ, Don champ. We'll see. We'll talk about it. Read through the cast, talk about which ones, you know, we're thrilled to see that which ones had to be there and good they are there, which ones they got right, which ones are maybe a little bit more of a question mark, which ones are downright misfires, each person, quick reaction to every single one. Then we're going to talk through some of the format potentials. Is it eras? Is it champ, non-champ, individual? What's it going to be? Quick discussion of that. Then quickly, one big high-level thought that I won't spoil for now, but one big high-level thought about the female side of the cast for this season that we've got to discuss. And then finally, way too early power rankings and some winner's picks, which is absurd to make. And obviously, I will change, potentially change those winner's picks based on what we see maybe from All-Stars 4 or just how I'm feeling when we do the official season preview way down the line. But I will still throw out some winner's picks here along with the way too early power rankings. So that's your agenda for this evening. We're going to do this as quick as we can. Roll through it. Season 40, what a year for the challenge. I just got to say, All-Stars 4 and then Season 40 back-to-back. If those are the two seasons we get this year, oh my goodness, we're in good hands. The challenge is so fucking back. And this podcast is very excited about that fact. Let's dive in. Season 40, cast reactions, instant reactions, two, three days later. They've been official. We were waiting our turn, and Wednesdays are a pod day anyways. You get it. Let's go. First and foremost, the host. Obviously, TJ Lavin is there, and obviously, that is a great, great thing. It would have been shocking if this was the season he decided to retire or say no, or they don't up his contract. I don't know. None of that was obviously ever in the cards. TJ is back. That's obviously great. I just basically brought this up to say I would love to see a Johnny Mosley appearance. I think it would be really cool if they threw Johnny Mosley in there for, you know, just ha- made a quick appearance, hosted a daily challenge, something to that effect. Obviously, may he rest in peace. Dave Mira isn't with us, the third of the three folks who have really hosted this. Mark Long, one-time host of the challenge, season five, one of the best ever, uh, is in the cast. And so maybe maybe Eric Nice could fly in from uh, Hawaii. It's a little quicker flight from Hawaii to Vietnam than the, the continental states here. Maybe he flies in and, you know, makes a cameo. Who knows? But uh, I think it would be cool to see Mosley make an appearance. But that's the host. Let's talk the cast. Now, this cast is broken up in two different ways. There are 20 champions and 20 non-champions, which seems on purpose. But there also happens to be 10 people from four different eras. If they debuted on seasons 1 through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 30, and 31 to now, those four eras, it is broken out. Five men, five women of each of those eras. We're going to walk through it in era chronological order here and alphabetical amongst that. So let's kick things off with era number one, the true OGs, if you will. First up is one of the only ones that I would call a mistake on this cast, but I obviously understand why she is there. And that is Anissa. I understand it. She hosts the podcast. She's been on all these recent seasons. She is one of, you know, along with CT and Bananas is, you know, and really just CT because Bananas debuted a few seasons after, but CT, Bananas, and Wes. Anissa is the old other old head OG that's like been doing the flagship for the whole time. It always has been, has been around a bunch recently. Darrell maybe, you know, throw in there two recent, recent couple of seasons, but I get it. She's obviously was going to be on this cast. It's just the only one that I'm like, I'm just a little bored of it. I've, we've, that's been that way for a few seasons in a row. It would have made way more sense to me if she wasn't on the last two or three seasons and then was on this season. It was like, yeah, you, sh- you define your era. You fit that criteria, which is the thing we're going to be talking about here era defining is going to come up because it it kind of is that's what they're going for here the best of the best i hope they don't try to bring that into it it but era defining folks that makes sense anisa fits that criteria i'm just a little bored of it then we got brad fantastic fits the criteria should be there in great shape the whole thing brad's great ct 
obviously you had to have CT. There's not a lot to say here other than this was, you know, there's going to be a lot of folks who we just say obviously needed is how I'm going to break it down. And that's all there really needs to be said. They had to be there. Thankfully they said yes. And they are there. Darrell, another one that fits that category. Obviously, obviously needed. Then we've got Derek and Jody, both great picks, both definitely define this era and both fit the bill of they define this OG era and are still like, physically competitive and can play with these younger folks. So you love to see that. So those are very smart picks on that front as well. Then we've got the, the legend herself, Katie is back and this is super fun. This is super fun and I'm very excited. And she does fit that era defining quality. Certainly. So she meets that criteria to be on the season. Absolutely. I just want to be honest up front though, that with this, era one crew and maybe even the era two crew, you know, obviously they're a bit older and this whole cast, by the way, the average age of this cast is, I think I saw, I don't even know if it was challenge stats. If maybe someone else put this out, but was like 37 and a half or something to that nature, which is just is wild. I, I still have time is, you know, I still have time guys, 30 spry 33 over here. Still got so much time to get on the challenge based off of this cast. But you know, with Katie and a few others, we will say, obviously, you know, the skill level and the physical side of things maybe isn't there. And that wasn't necessarily your strong suit way back when probably isn't going to be as much now, but definitely era defining definitely deserves to be there. And I am excited and I think it should be fun. Mark obviously had to have the Godfather, Mark Long, of course, and Rachel Robinson, of course, of course, of course, absolutely, absolutely needed. Honestly, would it be the one CT is the most needed from the era one, the people that fit debuted one through nine. Um, but I honestly might've taken Rachel as the second most important one to bring in from that group, mostly because again, back to the, the era one, they're older. I want them to be able to compete. Rachel, as always, as every moment of her entire life is very much up to the task on the physical side of things. And then we've got Tina, which is fantastic and inspired. And I love it because I love Tina. The people missing from this list, you know, it's hard to say that people would be missing. You have to kind of say who would they replace necessarily. So I think Veronica and Susie are the two to me that, you know, if we, if we, if we tossed Anissa and Katie out and threw Veronica and Susie in, I think that would be as, as perfect of a list as you could get. Obviously Coral isn't doing the show and she would be needed for the era defining, but Veronica and Coral and the Miz and Mark, if you remember, if you've never went and listened to it, my, you know, challenge Mount Rushmore, explaining the idea of what Mount Rushmore should actually be. Coral and Veronica were the two women on it. Mark and Miz were the two men on it. And we only have one of those four. So it would have been nice to see Veronica. I don't know if she got called. Maybe she said no. Maybe All-Stars 4 didn't have a great time. I don't know. But Veronica and Susie would be the two I think we maybe could could have been in here instead of Anissa and Katie, but otherwise this list pretty solid. And I will say I had no expectations that the Miz would be on the season. He's never able to do a season again, but if there was ever a time for him to make an appearance, to just fly over, make a quick appearance, get a bag of money and fly back, this would be it. So here's to hoping for that. Then we've got era two debuting from 11 to 20. And it kicks off with a big surprise, probably maybe the biggest surprise on the entire cast. We've got Aviv back, fresh meat champion Aviv, that is. Now, does she meet the era-defining quality? No, let's be honest. She was one-time champ, one season amazing. We've all clamored from then until now for her to be back. And she's been back in the, the mix with some Challenge Mania events, and she looks to be in great shape still. So I, I like her chances in this and everything. And I would have loved to see her on All Stars so that maybe there would have been a more of a like era defining quality about her. But I've always wanted her to do another season. And so the fact that it's this one, sure, maybe doesn't fit that criteria. But am I excited still? Absolutely. Then we got Brandon Nelson again. Similar to Aviv, a little more because he had a few more seasons to work on. No championships, though. This this is the the category with the most people maybe missing, and the most people who were who maybe had a reason to be missing, or maybe were never going to do it anyways. And so you had to find some backups, so to speak. But 
Brandon's a solid choice. He doesn't, if we're being honest, he doesn't fit era defining, but I really loved him. I look forward to seeing him on all stars four. And now I look forward to seeing him on this season Two. car. Maria next obviously needed was, you know, at in this era, first draft pick for sure. Can't wait to watch her on all stars four. Can't wait to watch her here. Thank goodness. We have car Maria back in our lives on the challenge. Then we got Derek Chavez. I hope he proves me wrong, but this was probably my least favorite pick. Now, if you listen to my coverage of the prior season, be thank, uh, you know, we talked when Corey lay made the finals of like, Hey, if you kind of look around here, they, they definitely have some, some issues with how many gay men they're casting and the representation of the gay men on the show. And so you know, they need, they had to get some people in here. And so Derek, and we're going to talk about Ryan in this group as well. We got at least got two gay men in a 40 person cast. We couldn't get more than two out of 20 guys, but um, you know, so I like from that aspect, like we needed that representation. That's fantastic. But again, doesn't fit the era defining for me. And We'll see. Maybe he'll prove me wrong. He has proven entertaining. He was very entertaining on his brief uh, time on, uh, was it All-Stars 1 or 2? Whichever, was he on 2? I forget whichever one he was on. When he did the Anit routine and everything, and unfortunately had the, you know, kind of tragic personal circumstances back home and everything. Storylines, entertaining, sure. I hope he proves me wrong. Emily Schramm, super fantastic. Unbelievable. Can't wait. Bananas, obviously needed. Kelly Ann, I would say obviously needed. I think she is in that level, even as a non-champion, that she absolutely was needed here and was era defining in her own right. Laurel, obviously needed. Fantastic. Can't wait to watch. We get, you know, we get double Laurel. We get double Cara Maria, double Rachel. We get double of so many unbelievable people back in our lives between All Stars 4 and this cast. Because this cast has, I don't have the exact number in me, but it has like nine or ten people from All Stars 4 that will then also be on this season, which is fantastic. So Laurel obviously needed Nehemiah. One that, you know, again, I'm about to go through the people missing from this era. He would he would not surpass some of the people that are missing, but I think he has earned it based off his very entertaining and quality performances uh, competitively on All-Stars 1, 2, 3, whichever the two or three that he was on of those. So he earned that spot. And then Ryan Kehoe, he does fall short of the era defining if we're, you know, being sticklers about that, that I'm trying to be here and mix objective. He hits the all-star eligible mark for me. Certainly he was a fantastic cast member at all times. He's a part of, you know, an integral part of one of my favorite casts and favorite seasons ever fresh me too. And so, you know, again, it's, it's a little short of the era defining for me, but I'm good with the pick and he's another going to double up all stars four and right into season 40 missing from this group is the biggest, the biggest missing people. First and foremost, Wes, of course, uh, who retired, but then like he's, I think he maybe is doing house of villains. So who knows? Maybe that's just a really short, I think that's a really short, like couple weeks shoot makes sense. He could do that. And you know, it doesn't want to be away for multiple months, but come on, man, you picked that. I know you, you, I don't know. It sucks that Wes isn't here. Let's just leave it at that. Tyler Duckworth should be here. Now, teacher can't get the time off. Uh, they're filming right now. You know, school's still in session. That's a bummer. I'm guessing. I'm hoping they called him. I mean, they've called him for all-stars. He's done it on a couple all-star seasons, but who knows? Paula is never doing the challenge again, but shout out to her because she should be here too. Same with Evelyn and Landon. They're, I don't think they're ever going to be willing to do a show. I mean, Landon's at least willing to show up to some challenge manias here and there. Evelyn is off the board from a challenge perspective. And then I also would throw in there Jen with two ends. Um, maybe that's personal bias. I know, you know, her similar to when we talk about Zach here later from era three missing. Uh, I think their politics in social media posting have Remove them from consideration, but uh, is definitely deserved to be mentioned in the missing category here. Then we've got era three, the heyday of the challenge. Let's be honest, 21 to 30. What a run we went on. All the rivals, the exes, free agents, and all the rest. Unbelievable era and brought us some fantastic cast members. And most of them are here for this season. Starting with Amanda. Necessary for sure. But the last time I will say that I think Amanda is a little overexposed, maybe Amanda at this point, but 
absolutely necessary from this group. I just don't know that I will say that again for any future seasons. Maybe, maybe I'll go all the way back in. I've always enjoyed Amanda. She's brought a lot to a lot of the recent seasons that she has been on. Um, I'm just, it's just been a lot of exposure to her, similar to some of these other folks that we're going to talk about in these last two eras. Then we've got Avery. Now, I adore Avery. I was, she's super attractive. Let's just be honest. I very much enjoyed uh, that portion of the real world Portland, the entire cast, very attractive cast in general. And, you know, I was still all in on real world at that time, obviously all in on the challenge when she was coming around. So I'm blinded a little bit by my love and attraction for her. So I want to say amazing inspired pick. She deserved the all-stars four, and I can't wait to watch her there. I think she's going to deliver there. I think she's going to deliver here on this season. But if we're being honest, again, the era defining criteria probably doesn't hit that. An amazing cast member who I thought we should have seen more of, and I'm glad we are now. Can't wait to see her back for both of these seasons. But if we're trying to do the objective ranking as well, era defining probably short of that. Corey is here obviously needed Devin is here obviously needed john a is here obviously needed i don't think there's a lot more to say about those three there they all clear clear clearly clear the bar of era defining for this particular group same with leroy glad he said f retirement and shout out to cam because obviously they either just did or they're about to have i I haven't been on social media a lot lately. Did they have their second child? They're about to have their second child. Either way, um, there's children to take care of at home while Leroy is doing this. So unbelievable that we get to see Cam and Leroy together on All Stars 4 here in a few weeks. And shout out to Cam for holding it down at home with the two little ones while Leroy's out here saying F retirement and back for season 40. He was absolutely needed. Naya, fantastic choice again even with the resurgence on all stars, you know, probably falls short of the era defining, but not too far off, super high impact uh, cast member. Every season she's been on fantastic. She's here. Tony needed, maybe not obviously needed, but absolutely needed and probably obviously needed. Tony time is back. Tori obviously needed. And then we've got the one question mark. The only question mark left on this cast is originally we thought, and I guess maybe he went and then left. I don't know the exact what went down, but Jordan was listed and was said to be there. And then was one of two people who we'll talk about the other one in the last era, but one of two people who was listed for a minute and then was taken off. And Jordan is not on the cast, supposedly. Again, I've stopped looking at updates because I don't want to start seeing what happens in the actual season. So um, if anyone knows if this person has been picked, feel free to comment, let me know, anything like that. Don't tell me anything that happens in the season, obviously. But if someone knows who this person is going to be, and it isn't still a question mark, let me know. Jordan was needed. It's a, such a bummer that he's not there. We, we were going to get CT Bananas and Jordan together, all still operating at a high level. That was going to be great. And now without Jordan there and without Wes there, like that's, it's a bummer for sure. Um, and it, it, this team, if this ends up being teams, this team needed Jordan. But uh, so one question mark up in the air. We'll talk alternates at the end here. I don't know if alternate just comes in. If, it, if, if that's the case, there's a pretty big drop off between Jordan and who the alternate for this group, the male alternate for this era would be. Missing from this group, though, first and foremost, shout out to Nelson. Uh, had his amputation surgery, I think, maybe a week ago or so now. So I hope, you know, recovery in this new chapter of life for him is off to a fantastic start. But that is obviously why he was not going to be there um, or could not be there. The biggest one, maybe the biggest miss of the entire cast is Ashley needs to be there. She needs to be there. What is with... Why? We don't got to litigate what maybe or maybe didn't, uh, you know, what we don't know. Uh, we never got to see what happened on Spies, Lies, and Allies, why she got removed from the game. We've heard different rumors, and any rumor that is out there so far has not sounded like something, you know, not it, it wasn't good, but was was it never allowed on the show again? I don't know. The things we are across the line for never allowed on the show again have been pretty severe. And again, based off the the rumors and things that are out there, I don't know that she reached that level, but she should be there. Um, just, yeah, needs to be there. Same with Zach should get a call. I don't care that he voted for Donald Trump and, you know, kind of likes Trumpy or something. I don't know. I don't care. Who gives a shit? <laughs> he, he, he should be 
in this group. And uh, it's been hilarious watching the people grapple with uh, the clips from his podcast being as entertaining as they have been for the most part. He's now got the first one finally where some cast was, you know, went back and was like, this is why we don't like you misogynist, whatever. I don't know. I don't, all I know is that he probably should be there, whether you like him or hate him or think anything of him or his politics or anything else, he should be there. Nani probably deserves, you know, as far as air defining, certainly uh, Frank, I would say even all, after only a couple of seasons, I would have, I would have been down to see Frank as a part of this list. And then Kayla is the other one that I think probably deserved to maybe have a shot at this. Maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. Maybe she should know after doing a couple seasons recently, I don't know. But uh, yeah, those are the folks I would say missing from this tier. And then finally, we've got Era 4. And holy shit, is this team stacked? My goodness. Now, they the biggest I, the biggest thing I have wrong with the entire list is coming up here. One, 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 just right through my heart. I can't, I can't take it. We'll get to it in just a moment. We'll go, we'll go alphabetical here, though. Horacio is there. Obviously needed fantastic that I don't know if they, they might've just waited until he was finished filming the, it was, I don't know if he was going back post uh, be fanged to film exalt Lon all stars or whatever. Uh, I don't that, that show or a different show. I don't know, but whatever he was filming after be fank, I'm glad that either it ended or they'd straight up just waited until they could get him because he's obviously needed in this cast. Then we've got Jenny West. Thank fucking God. Obviously needed. Okay. Only a couple seasons, super memorable, super good in those seasons, and obviously absolutely dominated and kicked ass and won in dominant fashion on Total Madness. And then we just haven't seen her. She's been an alternate on seasons, which is just a slap in the face by production. But she's here. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. That's all. That's all we'll say. Then the one that is the big problem for me, Josh. Obviously, I get it. Obviously, yes, he has been an era defining uh, person from this side of the, or from this, you know, 31 to now I get it. But essentially based on the other four guys on this list that I think are, are no brainers and fantastic choices and had, I, and I, I couldn't agree with more. It came down to one spot that was between Josh or Fessy and they chose Josh and not Fessy. And obviously that breaks my heart. The leader of the Fessy fan club can't take it, but there's still a chance. There's still a chance. We'll talk alternates in just a second. Casey had to be there. Absolutely. I, you know, everyone could be bored to death by her, but def defines this era. They want the best competitors to, she's got to be there for this Island, Michelle, Norris, Olivia, all four obviously needed post B Fank. Definitely need to continue those storylines. Kylan, Norris, huge, huge stars. Michelle and Olivia, even if you're not in love with them anymore, we need those storylines continued. And they definitely have been, you know, recent faces of the show for the last couple of seasons. And even, you know, in Michelle's case at USA here, uh, you know, all over the place. So those four definitely, definitely needed. And then Holly and Theo to round out the cast. Unbelievable. So, so, so love it. I really do think Pauly deserves that, that era defining, um, especially as a non-champ, especially staying in the loop, you know, with being with Kara and everything else. He's very much on top of mind for a lot of challenge fans and, you know, having the short but effective USA two come back. And so fantastic to see him here and his good buddy, Theo, who again, was unbelievable on his couple of seasons of the show and then had the really scary eye injury that prevented him from being allowed to compete for a while. And then finally he got medically cleared and they brought him back for world championships and he was really good there. And I'm very excited to see him here. So does he, does he meet era defining? It, it's one of those weird ones where like, yes, with an asterisk. Cause again, we, we know he would have been on more seasons if it wasn't for the eye injury, the whole thing, he's incredible. He's fantastic. But the people missing from this group. Okay, first and foremost, again, Fessy should be in there. He is an alternate. Spoiler, we're about to talk alternates in a second, but I think he should be there over Josh if you're talking those two, but should be there over both of them. Emmanuel should be there, okay? You just did a whole season. Whole season, battle for a new champion, and you were dumb enough to only have one champion instead of two, so Norris isn't even a champion. And maybe this was about, uh, it's, we screwed up. We didn't want him to win. And so whatever, we're just going to kick him to the curb. Maybe this was like, we're trying to do 20 champs, 20 non-champs. And we kind of needed 
this group, this era four, which by the way, only has two champs within the 10 of them, Jenny and Casey. We needed them to all be non champs for the numbers to work. So now Emmanuel got himself out. I don't know what the excuse is. I know a lot of the fandom didn't love his win. Isn't you know thrilled with him as a cast member. I was higher. On, I was lower on him on spies, lies and allies. And then I was much higher on him than, you know, kind of consensus during uh, this B fank season. But he just won the season that you set up to have one new champion. And then he's not there for the next. It's 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 kind of silly. It's kind of silly. And I feel bad for him. OK, so we'll leave it at that. Then Jay is the other one who was reported there and then was reported not there again. Him and Jordan were the two that that happened to. Definitely, uh, you know, I wasn't surprised when he was shown to be there. And But again, looking at this list, um, does he crack, you know, the five from this era of Josh, Kyland, Polly, Theo, Horacio? No, you could say like, hey, like Kylan, two seasons is your one big star turn season. Jay, a few more than that, but like, no, he doesn't, he doesn't really crack that list. Uh, definitely deserves, you know, would have deserved the spot if he had one here. And then maybe I would say Michaela over Olivia, but like, I get, I get that you have to have that story. You got to have the Olivia storyline continue into this season, but, um, yeah, so, so that makes sense. Michaela though, is the only one that I thought maybe. So I think Emmanuel should be there. I think if you had to pick between Fessy and Josh, I would have went Fessy and I maybe go Michaela over Olivia, but totally, totally understand why it's Olivia. And is is probably is the right. It's not probably, it is the correct choice to have her there. Now quickly, the alternates, two alternates, a male, a female per era, Ruthie and Cyrus from all, from number one. Love it. I hope, I kind of hope we get to see almost all of these alternates, honestly, uh, but definitely would love to see them, especially Ruthie. I think, you know, it could have Ruthie in there over Katie would have been, would have been nice, especially if this turns into teams. Then we got big easy and Carly as the alternates for era two, which shout out Carly, another one and done champ. If she were to be inserted in the game and they would just have two one and done champs from freshman one and two, similar to Aviv, made no sense why Carly was never invited back or maybe didn't answer the callback. I don't know, but uh, fantastic that she at least minimum gets a vacation in Vietnam here. And then Jasmine and Jay Mitchell for the alternates for era three. Jay making his big comeback on All Stars four. Clearly, it went well enough for them to call him again. And he is the one that, like, if Jordan isn't there and we've got a question mark, well, is it Jay then? Because he, he he is the alternate for that era. So maybe he's in the cast. Maybe he's on the show. Who knows? We'll see. It'd be, fair. <laughs> It'd be wild if out of nowhere, this amazing big year of the challenge, we have All-Stars 4, Season 40, and there's like 10 or 11 folks who are on both of them. Oh, my goodness. And one of those people is Jay after after his brief, memorable moment. And then all the way back later to be on both those seasons. That'd be pretty and wild. And then the alternates for the newest era, Big T and Fessy again. I'll, I'm not going to say it again. You know what I was about to say about Fessy. Big T definitely would be deserving of that era defining, but I think they picked the right five and the right alternate on that front. Now that we've went through the cast, which... It took forever. Let me quickly just read the names one time all the way through again. Era one, Anissa, Brad, CT, Darrell, Derek, Jody, Katie, Mark, Rachel, and Tina. Era two, Aviv, Brandon, Cara Maria, Derek, Emily, Shram. That is Bananas, Kellyanne, Laurel, Nehemiah, Ryan, Kehoe. Era three, Amanda, Avery, Corey, Devin, Jane, Leroy, Naya, Tony, Tori, and question mark, maybe Jay, who knows? Era 4, Rasio, Jenny, Josh, Casey, Kylan, Michelle, Maurice, Olivia, Polly, Theo. That's your cast. Now, formats. We've said a couple times here, there's obviously the four eras. There's 20 champs, 20 non-champs. Although maybe that's the reason Jay as the alternate isn't just a shoe in because like Jordan was a champ that is gone. So there's only 19 champions. So it's a little tricky. Uh, they could bring in, I guess they could bring in Hunter, I guess. Maybe they could give him a call and fly him in as a champ from that era. I'm trying to think again, call Zach, like he's right there. I bet he would do it. Um, but yeah, so we don't know, but there's a couple different formats. This could go, could it even go individual? We'll see, but there's, there's, you know, there's always the three options, teams, pairs, individual. Let's walk through them. There could be eras 
team eras. You know, each era is a team. This would be fantastic. The idea that era four wouldn't dominate if this is the case is silly. That team is unbelievably stacked, like unbelievable. And like, and they could just lose once and drop Olivia and be like, okay, uh, maybe even, I know she's my absolute favorite, but they need Michelle for the puzzles and stuff. But like that, that team is unbelievable. <laughs> okay. It's just so fucking good. Um, so if they do eras, uh, I think the new kids have, have a leg up. That is for sure. And, uh, but it would be great. It would be fantastic one to see a true team game again, even with four, uh, they could do it, you know, kind of cutthroat style, maybe even though that was only three, but they could figure it out. Maybe two eras could team up and they could do, you know, first half, second half, um, you know, era one and two together, three and four together and do two teams real, real old school style. There's a lot of ways they could go with the team element of this, but I do think we will see some sort of teams at some point during this season. We also, I think will at some point see champs paired with non champs. I think we will see pairs at some point, probably for a decent portion of the season. Look, it's an even split. It seems on purpose. There, there'd be no reason they did that on purpose otherwise. Uh, so it, it's going to happen at some point. Hopefully that means we're seeing a draft. A dra- if they do, if they do champ non champ pairs and it's random or there's an algorithm or any of that bullshit, I'm never going to turn it off. Obviously, but I would think about it. I would, I would have the thought. I would think if I was really a man of my morals, I would turn this off right here now. But I wouldn't do that. But obviously they're they're going to do a draft. Please, please, please do a draft and let let the non champs pick the champs. I like I like that version. Looking at these two lists a little bit better. Yes, does that mean that Katie's going to end up being like the last pick? And that sucks because I love Katie. Probably, but I think it's more interesting if the non-champs pick the champs, given who we've got here. And I think it would be fascinating to see, you know, similar to world championships, which champs get, you know, what's the draft order of the champs? And uh, yeah, I think that would be really, really fun to see. And then individual. I think at some point this becomes individual, even if it's just the final. I don't, maybe not. I mean, it would be really, really, really awesome of them to run a team final or a pair final. I just don't think they're going to do it. I think they're going to, I think they're going to drop it down to, to, to individuals somehow, some way two individual winners, a male and a female. But I hope I, I really would love it to be a pair if that's what ends up happening. But at some point, I think we're probably going to see individuals, which would at least be the most chaotic politically and socially. It would actually be unbelievable if they did individual to start. It would make the most sense, like, do the teams to start, then do the pairs, then do the individuals if you're going to mix formats. But it'd be unbelievable if day one, it was like, there's 40 of you, and it all free agent style, baby, all on your own. The politics, the social, the alliances would be out of control, chaotic, even if they do the individual later in the season. I think that will be the case. So that's you know something to look forward to that portion. But obviously, you can tell by the way I went through that. I'm most excited about a team idea and pairs idea. But it's going to be a combo. Let's be honest. It's obviously going to be a combo. There's going to be a combination of probably all three of those formats throughout. There's going to be a bunch of twists, turns, the whole thing. But I think this is the first time I'm in favor of that because I think they should kind of, they're doing eras of the show. It's this big celebration. I think they could should kind of alternate through formats based on eras of the show too. I think they should start in teams. They should move to pairs. And then at the end, it should be individual. They should use different formats. They should do a duel. Like they just, uh, style nominations. Like they just did on B Fank. They should do winning team votes, lose, uh, a losing team member in and the losing team votes at losing team member in. They should do not too many purges. I don't think they need to do any purges. Cause I want to keep more people there, but they do all kinds of different things in all kinds of different orders. And the one time I'm up for it, I just would really love it to kind of be based on like, let's celebrate the different versions of the show. Let's have different versions, like do Inferno style. If you're in teams, do an Inferno style, like life shield concept, bring that in there. You know, I want my, my biggest dream is just like, Hey, it's going to be four formats for each quarter of the season. But each one of those is going to be a very straightforward within itself, like version of something we've done before from one of the four eras of the show. That would be amazing. And I would absolutely love that. I didn't think in advance enough of like which from which era, which one would I want to see? I guess that's, it's you know, Gauntlet Inferno style for era one, dual style for era two. 
uh, which would be, and then, you know, rivals or exes style for era three, as far as voting with like the women voting on the men, the men voting on the women somehow, some way, if that was possible. And then the fourth era, I don't, I don't even know what, uh, that would be. I guess the third era could be the free agents, the true, the individual. And then the fourth era could be, there's 17 twists to every challenge and there's grenades and there's all this bolt and there's skulls and all this other stuff that could be that. So yeah, uh, that, that we just came up with that on the fly, but that could work. But um, yeah, I think we're going to see a mix of all of it. And I do think there's going to be definitely be some purges. And I just, I wish there wouldn't be. I wonder if they're smart enough to say, we brought 40 people here. We put all this money into this. Screw it. We're taking 20 to a final. There's no purges. We're eliminating two people a week, one person a week for 10 to 15 weeks. And then we're taking 16, 18, 20 people to a final. We're keeping a big cast. That would always work. I've always wanted that. And uh, this is our chance to get it with this huge inflated 40 person cast, which is amazing, by the way. And shout out to production before I'm down the road, have any issues with how they handle this season before we even discuss or ever find out how much money they're playing for. And it better, it, um, it it's, it better be a million dollars. Okay. First and foremost. And if they're, if they, if they have some real cojones, the last ditch thing that Paramount could do before they sell this company to someone else is they could say, Hey, MTV, you're not going to exist in a year or two. Guess what? Here's 2 million, have a male and a female winner. And they both win a million dollars. Let's do it. Something of that nature before any of that happens. Shout out to them for bringing 40 people, paying 40 people, paying eight alternates, paying for the production cast or crew that that takes and all of it. Those are the possible formats. Let's continue. Before we finish with the power rankings and predictions, this will lead nicely into the power rankings. We've got to talk about the women's cast as a whole, because I think this is the most stacked women's cast ever. I didn't do all of the research between now and the season preview. I will definitively answer this question and come back. Is this, or is it not? Because on the men's side, there's a standout. The duel is an iconic cast to me as far as just how insane it is from a, from an athletic competition level. Like just talking that part of this show, just competitively eight of the 10 guys on the duel. There's only 10, which is the big difference there. There was only 20 on the season versus 40 here, but it is the one on the men's side. We have that one standout season where the cast of the duel is just insane. I don't have it in front of me, but it's like, Evan, Kenny, CT, Wes, uh, Derek, Brad, and I'm missing one other person to make the eighth of just like in their prime, unbelievable that these eight people are going against each other. And then Nehemiah and Big Easy, who are not easy outs by any way or shape or form, were the other two. So that cast just has always like stood out as like, as far as the men go, the most competitive cast we've ever had is like, we've got eight legit legit people in their prime more or less athletically and physically going at each other the women have never had a cast like that that at least one that like rises above the rest so i do have to go back and see which one would i have said before is the best from just again the sports side of thing athletic side of thing ever on the women's side but i think this one might be it now they're the numbers are on its side again because it's a 40 person cast 20 20 women in the cast so there's a lot to go around but We've never, we've never had something like this, okay? Rachel, Car Maria, Emily Schramm, Laurel, Tori, Casey, and Jenny. Those seven women on the same season is insane from a competitive and athletic standpoint. Those are seven beasts, okay? That is it is un unbelievable that the seven of them are about to compete on a season together, which is wild. Jody then throw her in maybe as an eighth who deserves, you know, to be on the list, but she isn't a trainer in her middle age years. Like Rachel Robinson is who still like athletically is in that group. The same as like Cara Maria and Laurel and Emily and Tori and Casey and Jenny are all clearly in that group. Jody was at one point is still athletic in her own right, but maybe is like a half tier below that group. But historically speaking would be in there as far as a name goes. And then you've got Naya and Kellyanne and maybe even Nerese that low key when, you know, when we're talking just running and agility, not the strength and size factor, but like Nerese has the running and the agility as we just saw. And obviously the puzzle and stuff, we're not really talking about that here. We're talking athletics and size and everything, but Naya and Kellyanne, you know, are, are bumping up against there. And then if you just think about like, when we talk goat conversation, best ever, especially when you're talking purely competitive, like best other athlete competitive on the women's side, 
we're only missing Evelyn from the five women who I would say are most often named as the best ever. I would say Kara and Laurel and Evelyn come up the most. And then Emily and Rachel are always brought in as well as like, as far as athletes go, they don't maybe have as many wins or as many seasons, this, that, or the other. But like those five women, I think are the most named ever. And so Evelyn is the only one of that group that was not here. She was never going to be here, of course, obviously. So no, no shame there for production. Paula is the other one I would personally put in that conversation. I know some other people don't. I maybe have Paula much higher on my list than some, but I have her up in that top, top tier of women in the history of this show. She was never going to be there either. And then you've got the three dominant women of the new era with those four out of those five, like goat conversation folks with Tori Casey and Jenny being there, which is just wild. And the only one who isn't there kind of new era is cam who, and maybe Amber again, in kind of the Norris category of like, can obviously win a final. She's done it her rookie year. Um, doesn't quite have the strength size part that we're maybe factoring in pretty strongly here, but just it's off the charts. It's unbelievable. Percentage wise, again, it's nothing compared to the dual cast because again, that was 10 people versus 20. And so that we have 80% are these all time unbelievable athletes is, is never going to be touched or approached again, nor should it be because we should have cast bigger than 20 people and 10 of each gender. But again, even though there's 20 there, it's absolutely insane. And I just pray, I just pray like we are going to get one or two physical headbanger eliminations on the women's side, as well as I'm, I bet two or three or four, even on the men's side, we're going to have a couple of them. I'm just fingers crossed. Now, any superstition out there, any good luck charm out there, any good vibes we can send that if, and when we get the female headbangers, we get matchups of these giants. We don't get some lopsided affair where suddenly it's like, Everyone loved Norris, but now she has to play Laurel in Balls In, and it's not going to go so well, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I hope we don't see any of that. I don't need to see. I know some people would relish in the, like, oh, my gosh, Michelle has to face Kara again, but it's physical this time. That's not interesting to me. Seeing these giants, these unbelievable athletes, these absolute beasts go at each other would be unreal. I personally, number one draft pick of matchup I'd want to see, Emily and Laurel. I've always wanted to see it. We've never gotten to. Well, Emily is the one person in the history of the challenge that you could be like, she could beat Laurel in a hall brawl balls in uh, situation. Anything physical where I get to hit you, Laurel has obviously just towered over everyone else, dominated in that respect, and no one else would ever have come close except for Emily. And now we have a chance to maybe see it. That would be that would be legendary. And then the other thing I just want to throw out real quick right here at the end, you know, the fandom. Pretty pretty against Tori these days. Uh, pretty in pro Cara Laurel these days, you know. And there's definitely between those people, there's a little little real animosity, maybe a little real rivalry that we'll get to see play out on screen here. All I'm saying is this: there's a shot. There's a shot that we get Tori versus either Cara or Laurel in in a headbanger. That's that's on the table. That's in the cards. And if that happens. It is either going to be the best day ever or the worst day ever for the fandom. I am going to relish in the entertainment one way or the other. And this is maybe it's surprising. Maybe it doesn't. I think Tori beats them in and I, I'm, I, I should turn the recording off right now, but uh, yeah, I, I think if it happened, Tori might win. Finally, let's end here. Way too early power rankings and some way too early winners picks that are very subject to change and likely to change by the time we do a season preview. On the female side, this should come as no surprise. We just talked about some dominant dominant women that are in this cast. I've got Cara Maria number one. She's in the top tier of athletes. She has a lot of connections in this house. Pending All-Stars 4, she may, in what happens between her and Laurel there, Maybe they're working together. Maybe they're playing nice. Maybe they're on the same team if this is Era's teams. And so the one person who kind of stood in her way a couple different times uh, is maybe on her team or maybe, you know, socially on her side. The storyline would obviously be insane. Again, not counting like it's art. It might be insane on All-Stars 4 and we don't know. But Carmarie is number one for me. Jenny West and Emily Schramm are two, three. These two might blow the rest of the top tier athletes out of the water. These two are in a class of their own. Pending their cardio. I don't know. Jenny is in her class of her own strength wise in this cast, just bar none. But I, I, I assume there's some solid cardio that's in there as well. 
I don't know that for sure. I don't, you know, haven't seen her post about running a marathon or anything. Same with Emily Schramm, but assuming they can both run just fine, which they have proven to be able to do in the past. Again, Jenny, dominant, dominant victory going up that mountain until the madness. These two might just kind of blow everyone away. And even if they end up in a bunch of eliminations, you know, winning a bunch, so on and so forth. I've got them two and three. I've got Rachel, Laurel, Tori, and Casey then to round out those seven women. I think one of those seven is going to win and Rachel, Laurel, Tori, and Casey, I think these four, you know, they got the physical. We'll see how format lines up for them. Alliances line up for them, but they're they're in that next group. And again, though one of those seven I think is going to win, but three dark horses to round out a top 10, go half of the cast here in the power rankings. If you told me that one of those seven women, again, Cara, Jenny, Emily, Rachel, Laurel, Tori, Casey, didn't win my picks to say, okay, then I think it's either Narice, Jody, or Aviv. Those would be my dark horses. Those would be the ones I think kind of stand out to me. Why did I put them above John A., Kellyanne, Naya, Michelle? I don't really know. I don't have a great reason. I just did. So that's my female top 10 power rankings on the men's side. CT and Bananas have to be one, two. CT has to be number one. And Bananas arguably should be down the list because I think there's a better chance that people are nice and don't try to target CT than there is they're nice and don't try to target Bananas. And I think CT has more friends in the house and good connections. But these two might work together. They might work together. It could happen. They're, they might work against each other. We'll see. Either way, I think from a CT standpoint, it's either everyone's like, we love you, buddy, but we're voting you in every time. Or it's, CT's going to the final and probably going to win this and let's just crown him the ultimate challenge champion. Let that, let's all together decide that's what we want to do or have a young guy beat him in a final. But CT and Bananas, if they are in a final, I think they win versus anyone in the house unless there is a lot of running, like a lot of running in Horacio, Pauly, Theo are still around. One of those young guys that could run way better than anyone else in the house are still around. Then third, I've got Leroy. Combo beloved, but not great, which is the perfect place to be in this game, pending if you dominate on All-Stars 4. If you just dominate one, not that, that's different. Threat level increased, but should stay out of the limb, or limbs regardless of format. Good at them if he ends up in them, and I like his chances in a final. And then I've got the aforementioned Horacio, Pauly, Theo, and Kylan. If it's teams for long enough, their team is insane. Those four are a class above the rest athletically right now. Today could dominate dailies, could dominate a limbs. Could dominate a final if any of them get there. If that if that's a team, whew, just look out. New Era is going to dominate if it's teams. Just they, they have to. I just don't know how they're not. They're so good. Devin then is after them. It would maybe be the most fun and most funny thing to happen. Most funny outcome if Devin somehow won all of this. And I think there is a path. It's very narrow. It includes a lot of luck, but I think it exists. And it would be fantastic. And then Brad and Darrell round out my top 10. Respect to Mark and Derek. I don't think those two have a shot as OGs. I do think Brad and Darrell have a little bit of a shot. So they round out my top 10. So again, CT, Bananas, Leroy, Horacio, Pauli, Theo, Kylan, Devin, Brad, Darrell on the men's side, on the women's side, Cara, Jenny, Emily, Rachel, Laurel, Tori, Casey, Narice, Jody, Aviv. As for winner's picks, I think that Cara, Maria, and CT are going to stamp their place as the GOATs. This is it. This is the end of the conversation. CT, in my mind, will pass Bananas. Kara will solidify her spot above anyone you want to put with her. And I think those two rise above, both because they'll work together. They've got a lot of friends in the house, whether it's teams, individuals, pairs, what have you. I think they've got great connections. They're obviously great competitors. And I I think that the, the, the show, if production got to choose, she's got to hand pick. I think they might handpick CT and Car too. So, you, you know, that never hurts. It never hurts. So those are my way too early winter picks. I stand to change them going into the season. But for now, that's what I will say. And obviously that would be just, just incredible. Just incredible. So with that, we'll cover much more, obviously, in depth once the season comes. We'll do a proper preview. But as I said, stop. I'm so excited for the challenge. The challenge is so fucking back, dude. All-Stars 4 in season 40 this year. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be incredible. We'll be covering it all here, and we'll be going back and covering some old stuff again as well. So a lot, lot coming. Survivor is coming this weekend. If you're a Survivor fan watching that and not listening to myself and Tony, please tap in. They're long, but they're good. I promise. Again, no pods next week. My one week off season, please. And thank you for allowing that. Please come back two weeks from now though. And all stars for preview on April 1st. So with that, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I love you. I appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.